Hello, my name is Jason Miller. I am a ServiceNow consultant with the Walt Disney Company. I currently handle the majority of their contractual SLAs. Today, what I'd like to focus on is a ServiceNow community post uh, in which a user questioned uh, the validity of the SLA engine's calculations. Um, so today, I'm going to mostly focus on SLA definitions um, and how duration and schedule uh, will impact the outcome of the uh, the SLA breach time and whether the uh, SLA is uh, calculating the uh, the record according to the specifications in the actual SLA definition itself. So, um, in front of us right now, we have an eight to five schedule SLA. That's just what I called it. And basically, what this functions off of is the schedule here, eight to five weekdays. Now, one peculiar thing that you'll notice here is that the duration is three days, 18 hours. And uh, a lot of customers will look at that and say, wow, that's not really what I wanted. That's what, what I wanted was 10 business days. Well, one thing to consider when you're talking to your customers is what is a business day and uh, how many do they want? So if their business day is eight to five as specified in the schedule, and uh, we're only running on weekdays, um, then that's basically a nine hour day according to the system. However, this duration field right here um, looks at a day as in 24 and then breaks it up. So to give you a, a better idea of how this got to be three, uh, three days and 18 hours, we took uh, a requirement of 10 business days times nine hours. So our business requirement was 10 business days, and then it's running along this schedule here. So that's going to equal 90 hours altogether. So uh, I'll give you a second maybe to go ahead and pause it or take a screenshot. And then we can wipe that out. So we'll just remember that number 90. So one nice thing about this is that if you have a number up to 100, you can just put in 90 right here in the hours. Now watch what happens when I update uh, this SLA definition you'll see it changes to three days, 18 hours. So <clears throat> one nice feature about the system is that it will uh, have this banner right here. I guess it's a business rule that's running that tells you if an SLA, if this SLA were triggered right now, this is when um, it, would, it would breach. And then here's the actual elapsed time too. So that way um, you know that's factoring out things like weekends or, or whatever it is that you have in your schedule. So for this uh, SLA definition, I basically just said, okay, assignment group is golden parachute and the impact is one, and that will cause this SLA to fire. I then created a second SLA called eight to eight schedule SLA. And what this does is I just want to show you that um, this will pretty much have the same result because we're running on a 12 hour schedule. However, our days are five. So if we were to take and, and the requirement was 10 business days. So basically it's the same requirement, 10 business days. However, our schedule is 12 hours in a day. So that equals 120. And excuse me, 120. <laughs> and 120 divided by 24 would be five. So in a second, I'll show you how um, or what the results look like when we fire um, the SLAs because they're all going to attach. They have the same assignment group and impact in the start condition. And then um, what some p uh, you know some uh, beginners will forget about is that um, you know sometimes they'll create a schedule and they won't put any entries in the schedule. So I'll walk you through how to create a schedule and the entries. <clears throat> Um, in just a second, but there is this banner up here that says there are no active uh, entries in the schedule. Now it doesn't prevent it from running. Um, it, all it does is it fires it off and it just says, okay, we're running on a 24 seven schedule because that's the only schedule that um, we would know um, that that would be the default for the system. So if we were to change the schedule to none um, and we were to say no schedules defined, that'll just say, okay, you know, if there's no schedule there, we're, then we're just going to run 24-7. So if we do choose a schedule, and I purposely named it no entry schedule, um, on the submit, and we'll go ahead and save it, 
we'll have that error message pop up. So, and then if we want to take a look at the schedules here, um, I'll just take a stab at creating a new one. What I would do is I would look at one of the old ones um, that are created. I don't know, maybe this eight to five weekdays excluding holidays might be a good example. Um, so we'll see our schedule entries here. And it's pretty key that you have these. You have to have schedule entries. And uh, I guess ServiceNow has a child schedules, uh, DOS holidays. They do that for you out of the box. So that's rather nice. Um, if I go back here to our schedules, then we can take a stab at creating a new one. So I'm just going to call it test schedule. Keep the time zone floating. Uh, there's no parent. I'll hit save. And now we're going to have an error pop up here. Warning, we need to have active entries. So if you want to create schedule entries, uh, it's pretty simple. You're just going to create, just call this test schedule uh, for a schedule entry. Um, we can keep this blank. Um, if we wanted to, like that U.S. holiday schedule, I believe they have this excluded, uh, noted right here. So let's select that so that way it's excluded. But we're just going to keep it as none and then show as busy. And then uh, what we'll do is here is we'll say, okay, when do we want to start? Do we want to start at, I don't know, like 7 a.m.? Fine. And then, oh, we got to put the zero in front. And then when do we want to finish? Let's just say um, 6 p.m., so that would be what, 1800 hours. And then this is the uh, automation value right here, benefit, and that you can tell it when to repeat. So that way you don't have to enter in um, some sort of reoccurrence or what, whatever it is. Um, it just does it for you right here. And we can go ahead and save that. And that'll attach to our test schedule. So uh, now what I can do is go and open up an incident. And as you can see here, I have the impact and the assignment group. So this should tr trigger all three SLAs. And we can take a look at the results. And uh, as I noted before in some of the previous videos on my uh, uh, YouTube channel, uh, always create like two or three <clears throat> together if you're unsure of, of uh, what the results will be and kind of compare them to see um, what the behavior is against the record. Or the table that you're um, setting up these SLAs against. So let's take a look here. We have our no entries SLAs. So it, um, the start time was uh, 8:39 p.m. 2039, and the breach time is 19:39. So as you can tell, it's running on that 24/7 schedule, right? And then uh, since it's after 8 p.m., uh, both of these fired. So as you can see here. One will have the breach time right at 5 p.m. So we know that's our 8 to 5 schedule, right? So it's doing what it's supposed to do, and it's 10 days in the future, um, it, and it's factoring out um, the, uh, the weekends. So um, that's nice. And then here it's doing the same thing. So the days are correct and the times are correct. So right there we can see that um, these are running um, as we uh, have input into the system, and the results are as they were expected. So as you can see right there, we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow. Uh, that concludes our video for today. If you have any questions or comments, um, please go ahead and put them on the YouTube site, or you can um, find me on the, the ServiceNow community, um, and I'll be more than happy to create some content. Have a great evening.